The Washington Post denies having a copy of the video, and somehow Finkel's blueprint knowledge of the incident began and ended in the middle of a book. Unfortunately, typical of newspapers, they don't follow up these atrocities. Things that are extremely critical of the administration uh, only get you in trouble with the White House if you seem to be obsessed by them or pursue them. I haven't seen anyone raise the question now of why, on what basis, that video was denied to Reuters, who were, after all, interested in the circumstances under which two of their journalists had been killed. Now, have you seen anyone raise the question, all right, now we have the video. What was the basis for denying this? How does it hurt national security? WikiLeaks subscribes to traditional journalistic principles when it comes to protecting its sources. It went to extraordinary lengths to strip the video of electronic fingerprints that might expose the origins of the leak. All that we can guarantee uh, is that we won't be the source of the problem. I mean, coming in through us, we're going to protect them. And that if they are exposed, then we will fight like hell uh, to bring attention uh, to their plight and we'll send lawyers and cash if necessary to try and get them out of, their, out of that bad situation. Two years ago, a secret US intelligence report recommended targeting WikiLeaks sources. Washington administration officials don't see the public interest in the Iraq video or anything else WikiLeaks might be about to unleash. We take the reports of the deliberate unauthorized disclosure of classified State Department cables and materials uh, very seriously and the security of these materials is our highest priority. The video release triggered a major investigation, but strangely, the biggest breakthrough didn't come from crack police work, but from a former hacker named Adrian Lamo, who we tracked down on Skype. I first met Bradley Manning via AOL Instant Messenger. If Adrian Lamo is to be believed, he casually found himself chatting online to a man claiming to be a military insider. The insider was bragging about leaking the video and a truckload of other national security documents to WikiLeaks. He proceeded to identify himself as an intelligence analyst and posed the question, well, what would you do if you had unprecedented access to classified data 14 hours a day, seven days a week? Instead of celebrating the insider's cyber heroics as a fellow traveller might, Lamo blew the whistle, and 22-year-old Bradley Manning, an intelligence officer based in Baghdad, was arrested. He was firing bullets into the air without thought to consequence of where they might land or who they might hit. The bigger concern for authorities is what else? Did Manning leak a library of other classified material to WikiLeaks? And what is its next shot in the locker? Julian Assange is cryptic. He's not giving anything away yet. Is that a, um, a military operation you're talking about, or is it, uh, is it something else? I'm not commenting, it, it, but it's, it's, not, it's not any one operation. So it's, um, it's, it's either a mass bombing that took place or it's a, or it's a financial expose? Well, it, it's, it's something involving, you know, it's not this, but I can give an analogy. If there had been mass spying um, that had affected many, many people and organisations, um, and the details of that mass spying uh, were released, and that is something that would affect the interest, uh, reveal that the interests of many people had been abused. Is Assange a wanted man? 
There's no official word on that, but strangely one man who hunted him, former Australian Federal Police Officer Ken Day, now wishes him the best. I think one of the strengths of democracy is having a strong media, an independent voice to actually challenge what government and corporate worlds are doing. I think we've lost a lot of that in recent years. Um, and so, I, I, you know, at a very high level, I would support what he's doing to support transparency. But I will caution, there are always inherent dangers in how it's done, but I think it's great. And the one-time world title holder in the expose business appears happy to pass the mantle on to a new generation. It's not only a danger to governments to withholding wrongfully information. So yes, I think uh, he's a good candidate for being the most dangerous man in the world in the eyes of people like the one who gave me that award. I'm sure that Assange is now regarded as one of the very most dangerous men and he should be quite proud of that.